our children coming up, right? And when I reflect as an adult and think about, you know, the fact that, you know, my mom did not have me as a teenager, but she was a teen mom. Or whatever. She had my sister when she was 16. When I think about later on in life, my father getting on drugs, and when I think about my, my brother um, being in prison, when I think about my grandmother suffering from schizophrenia and having mental health issues, these are issues that our children currently deal with, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, my message to the teachers, and even when I speak to the community, is that although I had a very hardworking mother or whatever, and she represented um, very well as a parent, I, I'm also a community child because I played little league football for the boys club. So after school, I would go to the boys club. In the summer, I would go to the boys club. Um, you know, I was active in my, in my church or whatever. And it was the community along with my teachers that have made a impact on who I am. So you look at the factors that I've had to deal with, you would think that Sean Williams should not be a superintendent. Or Sean Williams should not have his doctorate as far as having his highest degree. But God along with people has made a difference. So I commend impact for what you're doing as it relates to touching the hearts of people because we just never know what people go through. And we can teach all day, but in order to move, in order even for me to move as an adult, I need to feel some level of love. You know, so I just really appreciate you guys. We embrace um, you guys in, in our school system as far as just, you know, touching the lives of our young people. We're really, really grateful. And I'm sure that our children and their parents are grateful as well. So once again, just thank you guys for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Now we're going to ask the principals from the. So let me introduce. Thank you. <laughs> okay, we're going to start with the elementary school. We have Ms. Meredith Davis. Right. So, and I'm going to say a little small something um, mm -hmm. as relates to each one of them. Okay. okay. Um, when I became, I had to search for work about. I can be branched like this. I come from a place where you can tell it kind of is. So when I'm talking to people and I want them to see me, I really have to really think about how I'm saying what I'm saying. But, uh, you know, um, when I became superintendent, you know, well, let me go back to me being principal. When I was principal at Midfield High School, and we was on this failure list, school list, or whatever, I began to test the kids and see, okay, well, why, where, what's the issue? And I would test the kids, and a lot of our kids that were in the 11th, 12th grade, they were reading on second grade level, third grade level. And I'm like, so here it is, we getting the blame for being on this failure list at a high school because our kids are not doing well on the ACT, right? However, they are not getting those foundational skills. And high school people, because I was a high school English teacher, we are not trained to teach people how to read. We are trained at a higher level as it relates to looking at Shakespeare and all that stuff. And we're not trained to put letters and sounds together. That's not a high school person trained. So, you know, me moving into that superintendent role, you know, I got an opportunity to do something about it, right? So I began sharing the information with the board or whatever. And unfortunately, that meant that some people could not travel along the journey with us. So I had an opportunity to replace the principal at each school. Ms. Davis was one that I was able to bring to the elementary school. Ms. Davis has high school principal experience. She was a middle school principal in Montgomery. She's been a librarian. I mean, she has all this extensive experience. Well, this is her second year at Midfield Elementary, and the things that she's bringing to that school that I know long term is going to make an impact on our city, it has a lot to do with the work that she's doing. For instance, I'm just using one example. Our kindergartners last year, where in the past year, our kids would come down to the move from kindergarten to first grade, you know, most of them just move on. They might not be on grade level, right? But 
Yes. But the day is every last one of our kindergartners came to first grade, first grade ready this year, right? So she's ensuring that from grade level to grade level, when she sent them to the middle school, that they are grade level. So when they get to high school, right, and we have to work on that high level skill and they get ready to take the ACT, they'll be ready and it won't be a situation where we just moving kids along because they got an A or B on their report card. They truly have the information that they need. So that's because we have the Miss Meredith Davis <laughs> who has the hard impact. Right? Next we have at the middle school we have Georgette Alexander. <laughs> so with, with Miss um, Alexander, Miss Alexander, she, um, of course, you know, she taught at Rutledge. She taught at the high school. Um, she became the dean of discipline. That's one thing she's known for now. <laughs> she don't play, right? The dean of discipline at the middle school. And she became assistant principal at the middle school. And now she's principal at the middle school. And right now, keep in mind, I said before that I have to really watch how I communicate because even when I have admin meetings with my people, I say right now, our better running school, right now, as far as if we had to uh, commercialize what we do, I would take it to the middle school because they have it going on. When I say they have it going on, you're going to see just order. You want to see uh, all level of engagement as far as learning, um, whereas the uh, high school, as far as the four card grade was like a B, and the elementary was an L, the middle school was a C, right? Mm -hmm. Well, y'all, we need to don't give you an L yet. But but at the the middle school, they have done very various presentations with the state because they're becoming that flagship um, school or whatever. So I'm very proud of um, Miss Alexander. She's going to introduce her sister principal when it's time for her to speak. But then the last thing I'm going to say, the end what I'm saying is that we need time, right, as far as developing our school system. You know, the, the issue that we have, it was done in one day, and one day is not going to get us out of what we're into. But I really feel good, and I can stand before God as it relates to even my role as superintendent, as it relates to the direction that we're going. Because our kids are learning, I'm more comfortable with them and when they go to grade level, grade level. So the type of things that I'm working on now is stuff like, okay, our data says only like 10 or 13% of our kids go to college, right? So what happened to the other 87% of our kids? So what we're trying to do now is develop some things that our kids are interested in and what we know of as vocational schooling. We're trying to develop programs like barbering, um, 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 culinary arts, you know, things that we know once they leave high school, they might not necessarily go to college, but they can really have a um, lucrative career in it. And we're partnering with like Lawson State and other places where um, they can have the credentials. So when they go talk to people, whatever, it's not just I had this experience in high school. They would have that paperwork as far as actually having a credential. So a person leaving the high school with college college life, they don't have to go to Lawson after they leave the high school. They can actually be a cosmetologist or whatever. So those are the types of things that I want y'all to be on the lookout for. Uh, one of the most exciting things I'm working on now is building and construction. We got a lot of, I want some of our young men who's interested in those things do that. So right now, I want to pay a part-time person or company some money. They come in and teach our kids skills, but then the partnership that I want to have with the city is, guess what, we got some houses around here that need some, some work on, right? So even if we can, if we have to purchase the house through the taxes for our school, the school system or whatever, our kid will actually have a lab be in that house, so to speak, and they can learn the skill, and then our city will benefit from that type of work. So we have a lot of things that we are really looking forward to in the future as far as our school district. So we need y'all to continue love and to continue praise. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
good afternoon. Um, <laughs> Thank you check the time to make sure I was correct. I am grateful to be here, to have an opportunity to bring one of our families, or actually it looks like I have two families here, to receive something to help them make their lives easier during this time. As you know, COVID has hit a lot of our families really hard. And my mom here, Ms. Stratford, I do remember us talking right at the beginning of COVID. And she works in the hotel industry. And COVID really hit her really, really hard. Um, she lost her job. It's just a lot. And so with this opportunity, this gave us a chance to help her provide a very great Christmas for her daughter. As you can tell, her daughter is not here because whatever you all have blessed her with, this will be her child. So it will be a surprise for her on Christmas Day. Mm -hmm. And I'm just grateful to the members of this community that thought enough of Midfield City Schools, Midfield Elementary School, and help us provide to those that have not, that may not just be able to provide for Amen. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, I'm so um, thankful for impact. I have, like I said, I have taught every lesson with your kids, so I know the people, the type of people you are. You all are dedicated, committed. You all are awesome parents. And I know that um, everything that when uh, I was in the classroom, you all was there. So I can just imagine what you all are going to do with this organization and you know what you're going to bring to Midfield City Schools. Um, our, one of our kids is Miss uh, Antonia Miles, and we just um, we know she's an a, a awesome child. And we just wanted um, to choose her because she tries her best in school, and she's a very sweet baby, very sweet baby. And her dad is always involved. Um, he's peer from peer for every time she calls. Um, he's just right on it. And um, we just, like I said, I just want to thank you all. I want to introduce you to my assistant principal, Miss Carolyn Watkins. <laughs> um, <laughs> so um, when I was the uh, assistant principal, um, Dr. Williams came to me and he said, you know, do you have someone in mind? <laughs> As my, I said, I already know. I said, I already know. I said, uh, Ms. Watkins, I have uh, watched her in the classroom. I said, she don't play just like, I said, we're going to be uh, hand in hand. Um, I, she takes the initiative. She does, uh, she gets things done. And that's who I need on my team. Amen. So, uh, you know, when the time when the time came, I already knew, I already had, to, I know, I knew that I was going to tap her for that position. So uh, like again, I, I thank you all. I thank you all for just being leaders in the community and just involving us. Thank you. 